There it is again. I, I think it's coming from the door. Somebody's at your door. What if it's him? Lori. Who else could it be? I can't see. Where's your phone? Lori. Just go away. Please. Leave us alone. Hey, you know what? Let me in. Oh. What? Oh, thank God it's you. Well, what happened? Are you okay? Yeah, we're fine. We're just scared. <sighs> the lights went out. And then oh. we heard somebody at the door. Why didn't you tell us? I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't mean to frighten you, but I had a hard time finding the keys uh, in the dark. Uh, we thought you were the man who called. What man? When is Jimmy getting home? Around 10 o'clock. Mm. Um, he, he almost didn't go, Mom, when he found out that you were coming, but he forgot that he promised Mark that he would be over at his place. Oh, my feelings aren't hurt. I know how boys are. Mm. I am a little disappointed, though. Mm. Me too. Uh, Mom, Jimmy wanted us to ask if he could stay with you this weekend. Of course. Oh, I forgot. My new boarder may be staying with me this weekend. Uh, maybe another weekend. Uh, that is, unless you two have plans to be alone. No. Not at all. Jean doesn't like being alone with me anymore. Carla. Well, it's true. It is not true. You couldn't prove it by me. I'm sorry, Mom. Now, Carla is obviously feeling neglected, as I'm sure she's told you already. More like unloved, and in more ways than one. Carla, now look, that's enough. Now, we'll discuss this later in private, okay? We already have, and it hasn't done any good. We need some help, Jean. Now, what you two are going through is not unusual. You just have to keep talking it through. Well, Jean refuses to go with me the to a marriage counselor. The problem is not that serious. Now, we can solve this. Come on. Oh, honey, maybe call us. Right? Mama, no, I'd rather not have outsiders involved. A marriage counselor listens to problems like ours all the time. He's a paid professional. He might even have some Carla, answers for on. us. Now, would you please, let's just drop the subject? A brick wall. It happens every time we try to talk. Wait a minute there. Now, what happened when I tried to talk to you a couple of days ago? You remember that, huh? You wouldn't listen. I listen. I just didn't believe you. Oh, who's putting up the wall now, Carla? Well, you gave excuses, not reasons. You've got to admit to the real problem before you can solve it. Who says the problem is with me? Where are you going? I'm going out. And if I'm not back before you go to sleep, I know you won't miss me. Hey, Mom. Hi. Where have you been? Julie and I went to a movie. Where were you? Alex and I went to dinner. Oh, yeah? Have fun? It was okay. What are you doing with the photo album? What does it look like I'm doing? I know what it looks like you're doing. Every once in a while, I'm entitled to a little nostalgia. Get a picture of your father. Now, who's that little kid with him? That's you with a mustache <laughs> you put on with a black marker. No wonder I couldn't see my face. <laughs> oh, you said you did it so you'd look more like your father. I guess so. Uh, Dad wore a mustache for as long as I can remember. You remind me a lot of him, even without the mustache. You mean that? Mm-hmm. I mean, your, your attitudes and your kindness and your strength. He'd be real proud of you. Thanks. You should think a lot of Dad. You miss him a lot these days, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Is it because of the photographs or maybe something else? Do I have to have a reason? Well, no, but you usually keep yourself busy to forget. What is it? Well, since I've been going out more, I find myself comparing whoever I'm with to your father. I have a nice time, but nobody measures up. I wish they did. I really do. Well, even Mr. Prescott? Jason was here when uh, Alex came by to pick me up. I guess I should be flattered at all the attention, but I'm not. I feel like I, I'm, I'm stuck in a triangle. 
triangle I'm, I'm not responsible for. I don't want to be. All I know is that I, deep down inside, I really love and miss your father very much. You know, this reminds me of a hurricane I was in once. The electricity was off for two days, and Mom had to use a little butane camping stove to cook on. Ben should be back by now. He hasn't been gone that long. What if the guy who called was waiting for him outside? Oh, when Lori, he... stop it. You're letting your imagination get the best of you. Maybe so, but I'll just feel better when he gets back. Look, people get weird phone calls all the time. It probably was a wrong phone number, just like you told Ben. Hey, Lori. Superintendent said the power should be back on any minute now. Did he say what happened? Yeah. Failure in the building's electrical system. The repairmen are working on it now. Only the lights in this building went off? Yeah, it seems that way. Anything happened while I was gone? Any more phone calls? Oh, I don't even know why I mentioned it. Well, considering everything that's happened recently, it might not have been a wrong number. You say the person just hung up when you answered? Yes, I, I said hello, and after a few seconds, he hung up. How do you know it was a he? Well, women don't usually make obscene phone calls. Obscene? I, th I thought you said the person didn't say anything. Uh, he didn't exactly. He, he just uh, breathed heavily and then hung up. <sighs> Why didn't you tell me this before? Because I didn't want you to get upset over nothing. Nothing? Hey, the lights. Nothing? Uh, it's been a long day. I think I'd better be going. Thanks for coming over, Marianne. Sure, it was exciting. I enjoy the beach, too. Uh, bye, Marianne, and thank you yeah, for everything. Sure. Marianne's a good friend. More than likely, the man who called is the same person who stole your purse and played hide-and-seek with your blouse. We don't know that for certain. Hey, we haven't been sure of anything since you started teaching in Chesterfield. I know. Lori, I... I have tried to be understanding because I know how much this job means to you. But I can't take any more, Lori. I know. I mean, the students are too much for you to handle. The Chesterfield area is too dangerous. <laughs> we hardly have any time with one another anymore. And now we're being harassed in our own home by, by a criminal. Well, at least the locks are changed. As long as you're teaching in Chesterfield, what's to prevent this person from stealing your purse again? Or worse? I love you so much, Lori. And as your husband, it's my God-given responsibility to take care of you. I want you to quit the job. Would tomorrow be soon enough? You had no right to drag our dirty laundry out in front of Mama. I thought it'd force you to go with me to get help. Carla, I can't see why you're making such a big deal about this thing. It is a big deal to me when the man I love is simply going through the motions of being a husband. Okay, I'll admit that I have been holding back, but give me a chance to work things out before you start nagging about it. If I nag, it's because I'm afraid you're not going to do anything about it. Well, telling me how displeased you are sure isn't going to help things. What will? I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, you keep on pressing me, and you're going to press me right out of the bedroom altogether. Oh, so now it's uh, play the game your way, oh, or we can just forget about this thing altogether. Come on, come on, Carl, I didn't mean it like that, so why don't you just back off? No! Not until we get to the bottom of this now. You've changed toward me, Jean, and I want us both to know why. Oh, I'm just working out something in, within myself, Well, that's it involves all. me. It's my life, too. Now, you've admitted part of it has to do with Mike wanting a career. Is that a... A new song that you have there? It came in today's mail from Lionel. Mm -hmm. Is he still your manager? He still looks out for me, but don't change the subject, Gene. Maybe Lionel is the subject and the problem. Oh, Lionel? Yeah. Oh, I don't understand. I mean, now, he wasn't happy about me putting my career on hold when I came back to you and Jimmy. But he hasn't been pushing me back into it either. Are the two of you more than uh, associates? We're friends. How close? I haven't seen him since I came back. Were you lovers? Now, you're breaking the rules we set. Not ask each other about the two years when we were separated. You are the one who said you wanted to get to the cause of the problem, lady. I never asked you about Samantha Marshall, anyone else that you saw in the last two years, and I don't have to answer anything Listen, to you. Listen, I never slept with Sam or anyone else, and don't tell me you didn't wonder about it, though. 
The possibility bothered me at first, but I put it out of my mind. Yeah, well, you know, I tried to put it out of my mind, but I couldn't. All those years that you were gone, I lay awake thinking about you, wondering where you were, who you were with, and what you were doing. And the thought of some man caressing and kissing you and loving you the way I would have given anything to do again, Carla, I tell you, that just hurts. It makes me sick. Those years are over. Wondering every time I touch you, if some other man touched you, and when I held you, if you were thinking about other men, I want only you. Carla, were there others? Yes. Had enough reading for tonight? Are my eyes crossed? <laughs> Just a little red. Learn anything interesting? Yeah. Back here in uh, chapter three, it was talking about how to get along with your coworkers. And it said that if someone is unusually quiet, it might mean that they're troubled about something or feeling insecure. So, so I should be sensitive to their needs. Oh, good advice. You suppose the same thing goes for roommates? <laughs> I'm worried about Carl and Jean. I hope it's nothing serious. Carla says it is, Jean says it isn't. And what do you say? I say if they don't do something about it real quick, it can be very serious. Well, what's the trouble? Well, Carla said that Jean's treating her differently and uh, that she doesn't feel loved. Well, I know that feeling. <laughs> Whenever Carla mentions it, Jean gets upset and won't talk. He stormed out of the house mad tonight after dinner. Well, why is he treating her differently? Well, neither one of them seem to know. Uh, Carla seems to think it's because of her career. She told me that she had left Jean and Jimmy for two years. Mm. But they had bigger troubles when they got back together. Well, I can still see why her career would be a sore spot. I know. But there's more to it. Oh. Well, I, I hope they get it all worked out. They're such a nice couple. Oh, yeah. There's no question about their love. <laughs> when Carla came back, Jean didn't divorce her, even though he had the chance. Well, their love brought them back together. I hope it's enough to hold them together for their sake and for Jimmy's. Yeah, well, a divorce is really very difficult on the children. Yeah, that two-year separation was bad enough. When Carla came back, little Jimmy was torn between the two of them. I'd hate to think what their problems will do to Jimmy this time. Why does he know? Well, you know, strife between parents is very hard to cover, and Jimmy's a smart little boy. Well, I'll pray for them. <laughs> Thank you, honey. And when you pray for them, pray for that each of them will forgive each other's past and start anew and build on the love that's already there. I will. Fresh start seems to be a gift from God, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes. I hope I get another chance with my son, Frederick. He lives with my ex-husband, Paul, in England, you know. Mm, that's a long way. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, about a year since I've seen him. I'd like to see him again soon. Oh, I know you must miss him a lot. Well, there are a lot of things that I need to make up to him. I wasn't a very good mother when I did have the chance. I wouldn't even blame him if he never wanted to see me again. Oh, I'm sure he thinks about you all the time. I'd like for him to know me now. You know, I, I'd like to try to be just the best mother Somebody that he could really be proud of and love. I think that God would help me do that, wouldn't he? Amen, sugar. God is the Lord of the second chance. You'll see. He'll give you your heart's desire one day. Think so? Oh, I surely do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Let me get that. You stay down there. Hello? Nancy, what a surprise. Next week? You're what? That's Lori in the second grade school play. <laughs> That's Lori. <laughs> she was Thomas Edison, your father's bright idea. <laughs> oh, look on that. I gotta go to bed. Well, that's the last page anyway. 
I'll be up in a minute. Okay, good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. You'll quit tomorrow? I'll call Mr. Kimball about getting a replacement. You don't believe me? Well, Yes, sure, sure. I know you're expecting the same old fight about the subject. But, Ben, I know it's time to quit. <sighs> I cannot tell you how relieved I am and how happy. <laughs> I know I should have quit sooner. I should have listened to you. I shouldn't have even taken the job in the first place. I love you. Do you forgive me for being so stubborn? Of course. But don't let it happen again. Well, I can't make any promises, <laughs> but I'll try. You know, I've only wanted what's best for you. I never had peace about you working there. Neither did I, really. But I was so determined to get a job, even if it wasn't the right one. And I, I, I think back now on this whole thing, and I remember when I first started praying about the job, I was telling God what I wanted instead of listening to what He wanted. I find myself praying that way sometimes, too. If only I had listened to you and Mom. What brought about this new insight? Is it because of everything that's happened here? It has something to do with a passage in the Bible that I've been having a hard time with. Uh, about the husband being the head of the wife in the home? How did you know? Pure genius. When I read that passage, it just seemed to jump out at me this last time. And I kept making excuses as to, to why I couldn't quit and why you were wrong to feel the way you do. But deep down, I never had peace about it either. And you know something? What? I do now, for the first time. All I ever wanted for you was for you to be happy and safe. <laughs> And now I'm both. If only I had wised up sooner, I wouldn't have been so frightened this whole time. Well, when you quit, all that will be over. Have you heard anything about the car? I talked to Sergeant Brubaker this morning. There's no trace of it. I'm sorry, Ben. Who cares about a car? The important thing is that you're safe. I can't believe it! 
Well, what is it? Nancy just called to invite me to their wedding next week. My father is going to marry that woman as soon as his divorce is final. After all she's done to you? Well, Daddy can't seem to see what she's done or her motives. She just has him fooled completely. Oh, I reckon that the first day I met her. Well, I don't mean just the way that he caters to her about charms and her emotions and all. I think that she is faking this whole injury. I don't believe her at all. Faking an injury? Uh -huh. Well, I don't have proof, Mama, but I think she's really lying about this paralysis. I think she can walk. Well, what about the doctors? Oh, the doctors, hey, they can't find anything wrong with her. See, it's just that she says she can't walk. Huh, I wouldn't put it past Nancy, but you know you have to have proof. I know, I know, and I don't, that's it, but I, I know she is just playing a sick, cruel game just to get at my father's money, because that's what she was trying to do to me, get rid of me for the same purpose. Oh, that poor girl needs our prayers. There's got to be... There's got to be something that I can do to stop this marriage. Miriam, the Lord will take care of it. Well, maybe, but in the meantime, there has to be some way that I can do something to help. I think you're just overreacting, honey, that you need patience and wisdom. I've missed spending our evenings together like this. Me too. Same time, same place tomorrow? Mm-hmm. You will definitely talk to Mr. Kimball? I'll call him first thing tomorrow about getting a replacement. Good. But that's tomorrow. Ben, did you hear that? <sighs> Laurie, stop imagining things. The doorknob is moving. Shh. Ben, no. It's too dangerous. 